Welcome to episode 8 of live.withcode.uk. Last week, um, well done to everybody who got involved in the activities where we used TK Inter to create a graphical user interface, a magic button to try and make the world a better place. Particular well done to students from All Saints. Um, you got all of the top five positions in the competition. So Robert was last week's competition winner. Well done, Robert. I'll get in touch um, with Mr. Tate and he'll confirm permissions to send out your prize. Um, so this week you voted for some game design, so we're going to use Pi Game Zero. Quite excited about it, but it's a bit more advanced than we normally do. So I'm not going to start from a blank canvas. Um, I will explain the code, um, but there's probably too much to go through. I want to keep the videos less than 15 minutes. But the game that we're going to create uses Pi Game Zero. Um, you have to control the little green person with a face mask and avoid all of the other um, nasty NVID um, 19, COVID-19, sorry. Um, viruses, if you get close, they change colour and it increases that dreaded R number. And if R goes above 1, then more viruses start to appear. So you can adapt this or make your own games, but that's the, the example that we're going to work through together. Um, I want to talk through the links for this week because I could really appreciate um, some help this week. Um, as usual, you can click on link 2 to get to the code. Link one is a type racer activity, so even if you don't understand the code, you can improve your accuracy and efficiency typing out the code as fast as possible. And if you're involved in the competition, then the faster you type, the more points you get. I'll come to number three in a moment, but number four, normally I set some remote learning free interactive activities, resources um, for people who want to stretch their understanding. I haven't written any um, tutorials in Pygame Zero, um, but I have given you some links for um, where you can go for some, some examples uh, and some extra extra um, uh, so the, the documentation behind it. But one thing I'd really appreciate some help with, um, each week the prizes for the competition um, come from some money from a grant, um, a, an award from Nesta uh, related to the K-Pride activities. Um, and Nesta have asked for some quotes from students um, about uh, <laughs> is K-Pride any good? So if it's rubbish, feel free to tell me. But I would really appreciate it if you can take the time to complete a survey. It's anonymous. You don't put your name. I don't store any personal details. But I'd love to send off some quotes to Nesta to say, um, are you using K-Pride? Is it any good? Um, that kind of thing. So what is K-Pride? Link three each week takes you to the code that we do in the live coding video. Um, and then it automatically generates um, some quizzes for you. So um, to try and help you understand, in this week's video, we've got 18 key concepts from, um, uh, from Python. The first one is assignment, which means trying to set the value of a variable. So here we've got a variable called player. We're trying to assign a value to it. So I'm going to click on that line number. And you can see we've used assignment lots of times in today's program. And there's loads of other key concepts in Python. Iteration means looping through, repeating. So I'm going to look for a for loop. Here we go. So for loops round lots of times. I'm going to click on that line. Uh, and we also had another example. So you have to, got to try and find all of these key concepts to boost your code comprehension so that you can look at code and try and understand it a bit more. P of K pride means predict. So you look at the code, you try and write down some predictions. So play a game. Um, a bit harder to make the predictions um, if it's Pi Game Zero. And then when you run it, um, you have to kind of compare your predictions with uh, what actually happens. Investigate is where you um, try and work through the comments at the bottom, see what happens as you tweak and change things. Um, and debug is, I think, the most useful one. You have a sabotage button which injects some errors into your code to give you confidence using these error messages to track down where the problems are. So bad input on line 11. Um, common mistake is using the wrong type of error message. So we fixed that one. Uh, it just gives you confidence and experience debugging your code. And then extending gives you a blank canvas and you've got to try and use all of the key Python concepts in your own Python program. So if you are able um, to give me some feedback, I can send that off to Nesta. I can continue to get some money to spend on prizes for students who do the competition. If your school hasn't registered for the competition yet, remind, um, just a reminder to teachers, it's free to register. It's free for students to get involved. Um, and each week a new student wins a prize. Fab, enough waffle from me. Let's have a look at the code. Um, so uh, I've tried to make Pygame Zero work online in Create with Code um, so that you can use it on any device, but it's not completely reliable, a bit like TK into last week. I would recommend that you use Moo. Um, 
because then you can put your own pictures in and it will work a lot better. So if you do this in Moo, um, then I'd recommend, um, so Moo's a free download, it works exactly the same. Just in Moo, go mode, press stop, and change to Pygame Zero mode, and then um, uh, make sure that you've got all of the images that you need. So today in the download, you can get splat, virus blue, virus green, and virus red. You can get those from um, link four, and uh, it's this one, source code for virus game. Unzip that and you've got everything that you need. If you use it in Moo, there are certain lines of code that you don't want to have. So in um, create with code, we need to import Pygame Zero Run. That's done automatically in Moo. You don't need to worry about that. And then also if you use um, create with code or idle or thony or something, you need to put pgzrun.go. Again, in Moo, you don't need to do that. It's done automatically. OK, so what does this do and how does this work? Well, game design doesn't really matter what language you create it in. Some of the concepts are the same. So whether you create a 3D game in Unity or use Pygame or Pygame Zero or any other game library, um, you do some stuff at the start when your program loads. So here we're making a sprite, an actor called Player that uses a picture called Virus Green. And this is our, these are the initial coordinates. We set up some variables, so we've got a list of bad guys, so those are the viruses that appear, and as R goes above 1, more bad guys will appear in this list. And then we've got some constants, so in Python, remember, constants are in capital letters, these won't change as the program runs, variables might change as the program runs. So you can experiment changing the maximum speed um, so that your character goes uh, crazily fast and see what happens. So you can change the value of constants, but you change them when you're writing the code, they don't change when your code runs. Okay. Then we've got some callback functions here. So on key down, Pygame Zero calls this whenever you press a key. Um, so we're saying if you press the left key, then um, we decrease the speed. Now this looks a bit confusing. Speed zero and speed one. This is the X um, value of your speed, and this is the Y value. So if we want to move left and right, we're changing the first item in this speed list. So to move left, that would be a minus number. So our character is going to move ever so slightly left when we run it. Um, and then the second number in this list is the, um, the Y part. So if I put that as 10, then our character is going to move um, uh, vertically. So we've got a list for um, the vector version of speed. Vector means you've got multiple directions, X and Y. Then in any game language, you've got a main loop which updates stuff to the screen and potentially does some game logic. So in Pygame Zero, you've got update, which is called lots of times per second, and you've got draw, which is called fewer times per second. So all of the game logic should go in update, so increasing variables, checking stuff, that kind of thing, and then displaying stuff on screen just goes in draw. So what are we doing? Well, first of all, we have to clear the screen. If I don't have that in, you can see that all of the previous drawings are just displayed on screen. So you can have any color you like. Um, these are just RGB values. So a tuple, which is like a list, three values, the amount of red, green, and blue. So if I want a red background, I'll have maximum red, no green, no blue. Just tweak the program, see what you can come up with yourself. Um, put this back to white with full on red, full on green, full on blue. And we want to draw the, the main virus character. So we made an actor up here called player, and then we can draw it here. Now, remember we created a list of bad guys um, here. So a list of bad guys, empty list, no bad guys yet. Um, we're going to iterate through that list. So for each bad guy in that list, we can work out how far away we are from the character. And if we're close, we can change to a different picture, a red picture. And then if R, I've just limited R, if we take this out, then R very quickly goes to a crazy number. So if we get close, you can see R is going to go um, um, to a really big number in theory. No, it's not increasing. Oh, yeah, sorry, because I um, commented out the code to increase it as well. So let's increase it all of the time if we're close to a virus. Um, yeah, if we get close, R just goes crazy, and we don't really want that to happen. 
So I've just put a limit. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just put a limit on the R number so life could go back to normal um, in society in lockdown at the moment? Um, so if you are close to a bad virus, you've broken social distancing, you're going to get infected. Otherwise, then R can gradually trickle back down to 0.5. Then, for each bad guy, remember we're iterating, so all of the lines of code that are indented, line 26 to line 36, this is going to happen for each individual bad virus. We're going to choose a random number, and then move it along um, horizontally, move it along vertically, and then draw it. And then we're just going to draw the text for the R number on here. So the size of the text, you can make that as big or as small as you want, a tiny little R. Um, you can change the colour. Um, stop i'm sure i pressed stop come on um there we go it's just thinking about it um put it back to 50. Uh, i've got round and str this looks rather confusing here this is just because um if we don't round the r number ooh, help um then Um, sometimes you see too many decimal places and we don't really want that to happen. Um, so round is a built-in procedure, sorry, a built-in function because it returns a value. Um, so I'm going to surround, surround R with round and put an extra parameter of two in to say round to two decimal places. If you only want to display one, then you change that to one instead of um, two. Okay, so that's the main draw loop. I've got a function, sorry, a procedure here. It doesn't return a value, so it's a procedure, not a function, called new virus. And it will only create a new virus if R is more than one. So remember, if R is more than one, it means that each person is going to infect more than one, more than themselves. If R is less than one, according to the news, then the rate of the virus reprodu reproductivity is going to go down and we're all safe. So we'll add a new actor, a new virus, into our list of bad guys. So we make a new virus, we put it at random coordinates, that's X, that's Y. Um, now this one just means um, one second later you're going to try and add a new virus. So if you want viruses to appear more frequently you can have 0 0.5 or if you want them to come up like every five seconds you can put five in there. Remember at the moment they'll only actually appear if R is more than one but you could um, change the logic to whatever you want um, for your game. Update. Um, so here, nothing draws to the screen here. It's just some game logic. So this is the thing that slows down um, the green um, uh, virusy blob thing. So if we didn't have this, um, then when you press the uh, the left and right arrows, um, the virus is going to continue to move a little bit like snake. It's going to always move uh, left or right. So I'll show you what I mean. If you comment all of these out, when you press left or right, it's going to continue to move in that direction. Um, so what I've done here is it iterates through both values for um, um, for speed. Remember, speed can be 0 for x or 1 for y. And I'm just looping through both of them using a, um, a for loop. So if our speed is more than zero, we decrease it. And if it's less than zero, we increase it until it kind of just slows down to zero. And then finally, at the start of the game, we'll add a new virus so that we can schedule it for one second, keep adding one. And then unless we're in um, Moo, we need to start the whole thing and press go. So that's an explanation of the game. Um, obviously, there's loads you can do in Pi Game Zero. It's an absolutely amazing library. Um, start with some of these challenges, but um, I've put some links on here um, for the documentation um, and loads of examples on here on GitHub that you can download uh, and have a play with. So see how far you can get. Next week we'll go back to a live coding video which I start from scratch and let you into the design processes. Please if you get a chance to um, take this survey I'd really appreciate some quotes so I can continue to get some, um, some funding for the prizes for these weekly competitions. Thanks for your hard work, look after yourselves um, and I'll see you next week. All the best, bye bye.